This is 5 Minute Friday number 3 and today we're going to be measuring and inspecting angles using a sign bar. This is part of the sliding block assembly which has a critical angle of 15 degrees on this taper here. So we need to inspect this edge to check that it falls within our 0.15 degree tolerance. So to do this we're going to need a set of gauge blocks or slip gauges and we're also going to need a tool called a sign bar and the sign bar that we'll be using is a 100 millimeter metric sign bar and that's going to allow us to measure the angle and the principle of this is that we're going to create a stack of slip gauges on the right hand side incline it at an angle and then the sign bar can be used either to describe lines in layout or it can be used to inspect angles with a dial test indicator so this is an image of what we're trying to achieve we're trying to incline the sign bar at an angle of 15 degrees so that when we run the uh, finger type DTI across the top of the surface we can uh, check for any movement and this, uh, this surface should be flat. So it's called a sign bar for good reason because um, these points here are exactly 100 millimeters. that's the hypotenuse of a triangle. The slip gauge stack is the opposite side and we form a triangle there. So we need to apply a bit of uh, secondary school a high school trig to find the exact height of slips required to create the 15 angle 15 degree angle that we require so you probably remember so SOH sine 15 equals the opposite which is our slip gauge pile here that we don't know we're trying to find that out over the hypotenuse which is this known distance is 100 mil sine bar so that is 100 millimeters and we can rearrange that to get sine 15 times 100 is equal to the slip gauge height that we need so we'll need to put that into a calculator if you're not sure how I did that if you're not too familiar with trigonometry then you can just use a um, equation triangle here if you're not so good with transposing equations cover up the O and it's sine times H. If we needed to find the angle, it would be the opposite divided by the half pattern news. So let's chuck that into a calculator. And there we have it. Uh, so we've got 15 sine times 100. And it gives us 25.8819. Our slips will measure to the thousandth. So we're going to use 25.882. 25.882 millimeters. So what we need to do now is pull those out of the slip um, gauge pile and to do that we'll start from the right we'll have a 1.002, a 1.08, a 1.8 and 22 millimeters of other slips. Once we've chosen our slips we need to ring them together which means Basically put them at 90 degrees and twist them with a little bit of pressure and they'll stick together due to molecular attraction. Now what I'm doing here is actually bad form. You shouldn't put them in contact with the surface plate and certainly not slide them like I did. But we're showing the point that they will stick together to create the accurate height. Once we've got the slip gauge pile, um, we can place that against an angle plate. That section I guess is unnecessary but helpful for getting everything squared up. Now I'm going to use two sign bars um, as opposed to one thick one don't have one single thick one and we're going to support our sliding block on top of there now if everything goes correctly then we should create a flat surface there due to the two 15 degree angles and what we'll do is we'll run a dial test indicator across that top surface so that we can check whether it's uh, running out or not. If it doesn't run out, we'll get a reading of zero. So we need to line up our DTI so that the finger is at roughly at an angle of 20 degrees or so when we first start. That way, when it makes contact with the block, it's near enough horizontal and that's gonna reduce sign error. Then we can move it back and forth. Once we're happy that it's in correct contact, we can zero out the gauge for a setting run it back and forth once again and make adjustments to the slip gauges on the right hand side so that it does actually run flat and 
through. So here we can see it's actually raising a little bit. So it's probably a little bit low at the bottom there. So we need to add slip gauges uh, to reduce that error. So now we're faced with a situation where we know the opposite side. So perhaps we've adjusted that to 25.951 and that causes it to run flat, which means now we've knocked this angle out. So we're actually going to find out what this angle is here. So this is an unknown angle and the, the convention is to call that unknown angle the Greek letter theta. Okay, so we're still going to use, in essence, the same type of equation, but this time we need to find the sine theta. So sine, oops, so sine, the unknown angle, theta, is equal to the opposite, which in this case is 25.951, divided by 100. So we need to process that, and to find out theta, we're going to use the inverse sine of this, which would be 0.2591. Again, we'll put that in the calculator. 25.951 divided by 100 sine to the minus 1, so inverse, sine to the minus 1. So the angle that we've actually inspected there isn't 15 degrees, but 15.041. Which is amazing, considering with so little equipment, we've managed to inspect to a thousandth of a degree.